Hey guys, it's a Tuesday morning. It's about 5.30. Just getting ready to head out. The boys are showing up right now. We got a greenhouse floor we're pouring today. It's a little different than our normal concrete floor pour, so I think you're going to like this one. So let's get on the road and check it out. All right guys, so this is the greenhouse. There's another big area right in front here that you can't see quite yet, but you will hear later in the video. And the reason this is a little different than our normal pours, I mean, normally if this was a regular concrete floor, we wouldn't have that box in the middle. The box, we had to box that little piece out in the middle. And there's a one in each section. You'll see the one in the other section here in the front is even bigger. Is they wanted the whole floor to slope to the middle. So because this is a greenhouse, you know, I'm assuming they'll have all kinds of plants and stuff around. When they water the plants, water drips on the floor, it's going to be able to drain into this middle section, into the crushed rock. And they have a bunch of drain pipes in there that lead out to a drainage pit. So in that aspect, it's quite a bit different than a, a normal concrete floor that we'd usually pour for a house or a shed or a garage or something like that. So we're basically pouring the floor around around these drainage pits but uh i mean for us it's not too bad it's 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 you know business as usual three and a half four inch thick concrete floor this one we got four thousand psi concrete on with some fiber mesh in it didn't call for any wire didn't call for any rebar just the fiber mesh reinforcement with the four thousand psi concrete and we'll end up we'll end up sawing a bunch of joints off this you know after we get all done but i get I did go back to this job probably four months after this day right here today that we're pouring. I went back four months later and I got a shot for you guys of, you know, where they are in the construction process. They're not, they're still not done yet. <laughs> they're still building it, but it gives you a little bit better perspective of what it's going to look like down the road. But right now I just wanted to show you the process of getting this floor poured and and then finishing it me and T are gonna stay here and finish this by hand so that I got a little bit of that on the video coming up a little bit later too we didn't have to we, they wanted a smooth floor so it would be easy to clean easy to sweep um, make you know make it easy for the water to drain into the pits but they didn't want it like power trialed what we call shined out like glass smooth so that's why T and I ended up just finishing it by hand with a mag and a steel trowel yeah, you can see the bigger pit inside this this area. This one was really big. Half the floor was that drainage pit area. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know down the road what if they're gonna fill that up to the floor height with the crushed rock. I would assume so. Or if they have something else planned, like a big grate that's gonna go over this or something like that. Basically, for a screed, we just had to use a four foot screed inside this thing. You know, go all the way around it. It actually made the pouring the floor more difficult than if the if the area was just you know a regular regular concrete floor all the way across this thing. So kind of like working our way around in a big rectangle, I guess you want to call it. It was about 1,100 square feet in all. Not a huge project, but kind of a kind of a different one for us that we you know different than pouring a garage floor, a house floor, a patio, sidewalk, pool deck, anything like that. One thing that makes it nice is with four of us, you know, one or two of us can keep pouring out of the truck and keep the keep the pour going while the other ones get it down, get it flat, get it screeded, you know, magging the edges. Basically it takes one person just to mag float the edges on a project like this. There's so many edges inside now you can kind of see the chalk line we're going to there we went we came here before the day before and got the forms up we we got the laser out shot all our grades snapped our chalk lines that's basically the process for most of our jobs you know i try to get to every single one of them in advance at least a day in advance if not more and get all our grades shot just makes figuring concrete easier for for jobs, especially if they're a little bit out of the ordinary. A 
A lot of bending over screeding with a small small rod. We're used to screeding with 12 foot, 14 foot rods, not 4 foot rods for a whole job like this. I get up there just scraping the chute down using my boot method. <laughs> How many of you guys, let me know down in the comments if you scrape chutes like that or if you like my scraping chutes by the boot method. This is Brian the super driver over there. And then Darren's just going to finish it up with a bull float. Now, we'll get, we got the hand finishing part coming right up. So after about Darren and Luke left, went and did another job. And T and I waited around for about 45 minutes. And it was, it was about ready to mag float after that. So Tia got on those skids and got into this middle part. And she was going to go around and do whatever she could reach from the middle. And then I jumped on the skids there up on the other end and started floating from up in there. Now I'm just mag floating this at first. It wasn't quite, it wasn't, it was definitely just right to get on it with a mag float, get all the bull float lines out, get everything smoothed out by hand with a mag. And sometimes on a smaller project, you can give it a little more time and then you can mag it and steel trial it right at the same time. But this wasn't quite ready for that. So it was basically just, let's get it all mag floated out. And it probably took me between me going around with skids and Tia doing it by hand. It was probably 20 minutes or so hitting this whole thing. And it's about 10 in the morning right now. So it's getting, as the day goes on, it's getting warmer and warmer. So it's not going to take very long for this to cure up. I'll probably... I'll probably give it a couple minutes when I get off it here with a mag and jump right back on it with a hand trial. Because if I if I wait too long, then I'm not going to be able to get it steel trialed by hand. That's for sure. I'll have to, I do have a power trial with me. If I did get in trouble by hand, I can always throw the power trial on it. But I'm trying to avoid that and just get it done by hand. This stuff did mag float out pretty good. You can see I'm basically just going across it once or twice. And the surface, surface has some good paste to it, some good cream, so it fills in really nice. All the bleed water ended up drying up, so we don't have to worry about any bleed water. Now his, his Tia going around that inside edge with the hand trial, she could reach quite a bit of it, which made, it made troweling for me a lot faster, having that inside edge all done. And you can see I hit it with the steel right there. So I ended up hitting it with the steel at, two to three times and you can see how smooth it is on this first hit so you can just imagine how much smoother it got each hit and this is where they are now this is about four months down the road they got you know the frame up they got a lot of the glass in that's definitely the gonna be the greenhouse part of it and then the other section there where it's all stick built wood framed I you know I don't know exactly what they're gonna do in there but it's definitely a little bit different than your conventional construction. You can see if you look down at the floor closely, you can see the saw cuts I put in there. I put quite a few saw cuts in there. I didn't notice any any cracks, any random cracks that weren't in the saw cuts either. So we ended up putting quite a few in there. <clears throat> you can see they're right in the middle of construction. <laughs> the guy was like, geez, they're going to see all my mess. I'm like, oh, they're not going to care about any mess. This guy has quite a few buildings on on site, so he just this is just like a project for him, a hobby. And I just wanted to show you what the building looks like. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.